Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're going to review the 8-bit Doe N30 mouse. Let's get started. So if you aren't aware, 8-bit Doe released an NES inspired mouse. You can see it right here. Uh, it's called the N30. It was just recently released and I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I want to show you the unboxing. I want to show you the history behind it. And I obviously want to show you how it performs. Now the N30 has a very interesting history behind it. It's very short, very simple, but also very interesting. So it says here on the site, this is Engadget. NES gamepad mouse is the most amazing piece of industrial design in the history of humankind. Now what's interesting about this, it was written April 30th, 2009, so over 10 years ago. And this is an almost exact image of the N30 that's out right now. So this was originally a foam mock-up, and this was covered by a bunch of different sites. People were very excited about the idea of this foam mock-up mouse. Well, Apid Doe took it one step further. So here we are on Apid Doe's website. It says we collaborated with Daniel Jansen to bring a one-of-a-kind computer mouse to reality. Now, if we click on his name, it brings us to a website called Switch and Lever. And we can see right here, completion date, 2008 to 2019. And on this site too is the original foam mockup. Now let's talk about the tech specs for a second. First and foremost, it's compatible with Windows and Mac. It is 2.4G, which means it does require a dongle, a USB dongle in order to function. It is not Bluetooth on its own. Now, if we take a look as well, it's 1000 DPI, it weighs 71 grams. And I will stress this is without the battery because I did weigh it with the battery. Uh, and I'll get to that in a bit, but it's 71 grams without a battery. It does require a battery. It has the D-pad for touch navigation, a 3D touch panel for scrolling and rubber pad buttons. So very similar button feel to an NES controller. They also state between 100 to 120 hours of use per battery. And I would say this is something that will vary greatly per user because there are different brands of batteries out there. There are different qualities of batteries out there. For me, I use dollar store AA batteries. I think they're Panasonic. Uh, I just buy whatever is the cheapest and just use it that way. So I can probably expect towards the lower end of the spectrum in terms of overall life per battery. So the box on this is pretty simple and straightforward. It's just a small little box with some information about the mouse. On the outside, you can see a picture of the mouse as well on the back, you can see it's 2.4G, Windows, Mac OS, 1000 DPI, an eight meter distance, and also the one AA battery that's not included. Opening up the box, the first thing you see is the N30 mouse with a piece of plastic covering it. Hopefully this plastic's recyclable, I'll have to check later. Uh, looking at the mouse, it's almost exactly like the image was online. I'm very happy about that. There's also a little instruction manual tucked in in the bottom of the box. Taking a quick peek at the instruction manual, it's literally just one piece of paper printed on both sides folded up. Uh, there are button notations, so A, C, and B, C being the scroll wheel, and D, E, F, G being the up, down, left, right on the D-pad. So on the bottom, there is an on-off switch, as well as the dongle, which it states is hidden inside the battery compartment. Looking at the mouse more closely, it really does look like they turn an NES controller into a mouse. It is notably missing the start and select buttons, which I'm a bit disappointed about. I really would have liked to see that. So if we open up the back panel here where the battery goes, you can also see the dongle that's tucked nicely inside. This is the dongle that plugs into a USB port on your computer in order to connect the mouse. So now for comparison, I have an actual NES controller, not the NES mini controller. This is the real deal, the real NES controller. So looking at the D-pads, the D-pads look similar but also different. So the centerpiece in each D-pad, the NES has a smaller hole, I would say, in the center, a smaller divot. Uh, in terms of buttons, the buttons appear slightly larger, ever so slightly larger on the mouse, and the coloring is darker. So it is a darker red in comparison with the original NES controller. So here's the N30 mouse, it is turned on, 
the red light is on. I'll use the top of this EverDrive box just to kind of control the pointer so you can see the pointer moving around. So here's how the D-pad works. If you press right on the D-pad, it works as forward in your web browser. If you press left, that works as back. If you press down, it works as a page down function. And if you press up, it works as a page up function. So now turning this up on its end between the two buttons is a touchpad, which acts as a scroll wheel. So there is no touchpad button, uh, but there is a functionality here. If you are to drag your finger up and down on the touchpad, it scrolls up and down. And honestly, my experience with this so far has been good. It's been absolutely fine. I do prefer a scroll wheel, but the touchpad is a very nice function here as opposed to having nothing. In terms of pointer accuracy, it's very comparable. So this feels very comparable to pretty much every other generic or even regular use mouse when it comes to the 2.4G wireless and the pointing. And I will say that because I have other mice with dongles, uh, for example, by Logitech, uh, that this feels very similar to. It, it's not that much different. Now, compared to a gaming mouse that's wireless, that's specifically designed for high performance, you may notice a difference between the two mice. So I would definitely say this receiver is not on the same level as, for example, a Razer gaming mouse or a Logitech gaming mouse that's wireless. But for a standard, just everyday use that's not gaming, this is absolutely fine. And now my biggest dislikes. There are two main things that I dislike about this mouse. First and foremost is comfort. And I think that's a very important thing. I think comfort is a very important thing to consider when choosing a mouse, especially if you're going to use it as a daily driver. So this mouse for me is not comfortable at all. And that's being compared with my daily driver, which is a Logitech G403. So this, in my opinion, is one of the most comfortable mice on the market. There are a lot of comfortable mice. In my opinion, the N30 isn't one of them. However, that may differ between people. Everyone's hands are different. Everyone's preferences are different. I personally just don't find this comfortable. And if you want to know why, these buttons are absolutely fine. The D-pad is absolutely fine. It's a little weird to get used to because normal mouse buttons are a larger surface area where you can click. This is very specific, uh, but it's these ridges right here along the back. So along both sides of this mouse, right at the very back, there are two ridges, well, one ridge on each side, which are not comfortable to me. The way I use this mouse, uh, depending if I want to try a claw version or a palm version, uh, it's these ridges at the very back on either grip for me dig in and it's not a comfortable experience. So they dig in on either side of my hand. I guess you can't see it unless I turn. Yeah, I guess you can kind of see it there. Um, but they dig in and it's really not a comfortable position for my hand. So for a long use, I probably wouldn't use this at all. Now for short uses for maybe five or 10 minutes at a time, I don't see much of an issue with this. Um, in terms of where I'm going to use this, I'm probably not going to use this regularly at all or ever on my computer. I might use it with my Raspberry Pi because this is kind of neat. I might also use it here and there on my work computer just because it's really cool to look at. And on that same vein, I will say uh, it does look like an NES controller was turned into a mouse and it feels like an NES controller was turned into a mouse. So if you remember correctly, the NES controller was a freaking rectangle that was not the most comfortable controller out there. Some people love it, some people hate it. Me, I never found it to be the most comfortable controller out there, especially the corners, because they tend to dig into my palms a little bit. Uh, this feels very much like an NES controller mouse, so I will give it to them for that. I will say though, the second thing I don't like about this from the comfort, is it's missing a start and select button. And I would have liked to see it right on this side of the mouse here. I would have liked to see a start and select button as just two mappable buttons to whatever you wanted them to do. But moving on, my overall thoughts on this mouse. Is it a buy? Is it a not buy? I will say that is completely up to you. I'm not gonna make that decision for you. If you're looking for a comfortable ergonomic mouse for gaming, probably not the answer here. Uh, if you're looking for something that is nostalgic, that reminds you of using an NES controller on a daily basis, this might be for you. In terms of 
overall capability as a mouse, it's not bad. It's perfectly capable as a mouse. It's not just a gimmick. Um, I think I'm probably going to use this with my Raspberry Pi or potentially even with my work computer because I think something like this is a great little neat conversation piece in the office. People will look at it. A lot of people recognize Nintendo stuff and this looks really cool. So I like that. But no, this will not replace my daily driver of a mouse, which is my Logitech G403, which I love. So I think this is more of a secondary mouse for most people. Um, I, I can't really see this being used as a primary mouse, but that doesn't mean this is bad by any stretch of the imagination. It's cool. It works well. It's not comfortable to me. In Canada, this mouse is available for $33.99, which I feel is appropriate for what you're getting here. Uh, in the States, on Amazon, it's currently unavailable. And on the 8 website, it's listed at $24.99 US, but it's currently sold out. So that's all I've got for today. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't like the video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. If you have any questions about the N30, let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you, everyone. Take care.